Hey, this is Eran Stern. Welcome to this in-depth tutorial for Artbeats.com. In this video, I'll show you how to use After Effects CC together with the bundled Cinema 4D Lite to create a match moving shot using the improved After Effects camera tracker. And we will also share the solution with C4D and then add some 3D objects over there. Since this is an Artbeats tutorial, I have the privilege of using one of their amazing clips in order to pull this design. Before we'll start, I just want to show you the original clip that I'm working with. This is clip number 006-C104, which is also available in stereo as well as 4K resolution. We can see a landing at the Long Beach Airport with a helicopter in the foreground. I've already used a time remapping technique in After Effects in order to make it more engaging and fit my need for placing two titles. I'm not going to cover this here, but there are several art bits tutorial which I'm showing you how to create this effect, such as the mind trip tutorial. Now it may look quite simple, but trust me, there are a few things worth knowing in order to achieve this or a similar effect. Once you have this scene set up, you can change the titles and also add more complex 3D object, even if it doesn't make any sense. For example, take a look at this one. The robot. Wow. By the way, the robot model that you see here is a free download from the freebies section at the pixellab.net. It was created by Alex Makash, and you can download your own copy and play with it. However, for this tutorial, I'm going to stick with the first example, the simpler one. And we'll create a 3D text inside After Effects and then, of course, some more fancy text inside Cinema 4D. I'm ahead of my time now, so let's start at the beginning. The first stage here is to drag the clip onto the new composition icon. Then I'm going to press Ctrl K and name my composition the Chopper. I'm going to say OK for that. And first we need to solve the camera. So make sure the clip is still selected and from the animation menu choose Track Camera. Now of course this is a background operation. So you can work during this procedure. But I'm going to speed up the recording in order for us to get to the second stage after the process is done. Now, of course, you can scrub the timeline just to see if it did a nice job. And I think it did, but we may be able to improve it. See those trackers that are appearing on top of the Outbeats watermark? We can get rid of them in the new version. Open up the advanced option and just note the average error here is 0.77. Let's try to improve it by making sure the auto delete points across time is checked and this should be checked by default. Now just identify those trackers that are appearing on the Outbeats logo and basically marquee around them and delete the trackers that don't need to be there. They are basically just confusing the tracker. So you might need to go through this and just delete those trackers while they're appearing you can see that uh, the shot is moving and from time to time After Effects is creating new trackers. However, I think that this is quite decent and we got rid of most of them. Now, when you do such a thing, you will get a second banner for the solving camera. Wait for it a little bit and take a look at the average arrow. If this number is going down, it means that you are indeed improving your tracker result. Now let's use this tracking information in order to create a title and place it somewhere over here. This is also a good opportunity to show you another big improvement. For that, let's just marquee around a couple of these trackers just in order for After Effects to place a target on the floor here. Now I want to make sure that I can see the double arrows here. And it's a little bit difficult to actually identify it. 
So I'm just going to go to the track point size and reduce my tracker just so I will be able to get closer to the middle of the target here and see the double arrows icon here. And once I see it, I can basically drag this target and this will be our plane, our floor. Now in order to tell After Effects that we want the coordinate of this floor, the middle of the target here to be 0, 0, 0 in terms of the 3D world and the camera that it is going to create, we need to right click and from here let's set our ground plane and origin. Make sure to do this as a first step before creating your text, camera and other elements. So after doing this, we can once again return to this, right click on it, and let's ask After Effects to create text and camera. Now, since I know that I want to add some shadows, something that will look similar to the shadows that I see over here, I will also right click while everything is still selected and choose to create a shadow catcher and a light. For now, let's select the text Press P in order to see its position and we can see that indeed the position is 0, 0, 0, exactly as we expected. I'm going to open it up and before doing anything, let's just change the orientation back to 0 so the text will actually stand on this landing. Now, of course, you can use the rotation in order to rotate it according to your needs. I'm just going to maybe guess that minus 90 will give us the desired angle. Because this element is very close to the camera, After Effects guess that it should be quite huge. And it gives us this enormous scale. I'm going to change it back to 100%. Now let's quickly format the text just by double clicking on the letter T. This will open up the character panel. I'm just going to use this eyedropper to maybe sample this blue color from the sky. And instead of this, let's say that this will be the next program. So I'm just going to type down next with a couple of bigger than sign just to give it a nice graphic hint. Now, basically, this is all we need to do in terms of the text itself. However, I do need to work on its light in order to match it to the scene and maybe relight it a little bit better according to my needs. Now remember that the light is casting a shadow. This is what we ask it to do. And automatically we have a shadow catcher plane. And this is the shadow that we see here. Now I'm going to press P while the light is selected, just in order to show you that the position of the light is completely arbitrary. My recommendation is to start with the same position of the element that you want to light. In my case, the text. Since I know that the text is on 0, 0, 0, I'm just going to choose the same numbers for the light. And then you can basically raise it up and maybe change the X position, move it across the scene until you modify it according to your needs. And what I'm trying to do here is basically give it more or less the same shadows as I see over here. So I can raise it up or lower it down. We can see a very nice shadows appearing on the floor here. So maybe something along those lines. It doesn't have to be physically 100% correct. Just make it look believable. Now I'm just going to double click on the light and maybe reduce the shadow darkness once again until I see that it matches up with the scene. So in this case, maybe 70%. You can always play with the shadow diffusion. However, there is enough shadow diffusion on the floor already. Basically, this is it in terms of the text and its shadow. This is, of course, all done inside After Effects. So let's just check the result quite quickly here by creating a ramp preview. And I think that this look quite good the text is sticking to the floor, the shadow is behaving according to what I wanted them to. And now we are ready to place some bigger and fancier element over here in front of this chopper. In order to do so, I just want to do some prep work here inside After Effects. This will help us when we are moving to cinema and placing the 3D object. 
So just in order to clean up my workspace, I'm going to press Command 6 and Command 7 to close the paragraph and character panels. Then I'm going to reselect my original clip, select my 3D camera tracker, and once again I'm going to marquee around a couple of those trackers. Maybe we need to add some more, so just hold down Shift until you see the, the plane that you are wishing for is on top of the floor here. Now as before, I'm waiting for the double arrow icon here and just drag it over here. Now I know that this target needs to be a little bit more bigger in order for it to cover the ground and create enough space for the shadow. This will be more clear in a moment, but for now I'm just going to raise the target size to something along those lines, so maybe 250. Now, as soon as I'm happy, I'm just going to right click on it and create a solid in this place. Now let's test this solid before doing anything else. In order to do so, once again, I'm going to press P to see its position and maybe also Shift R to see the orientation. Now let's go to the effect menu and from the generate category, I'm going to add the grid effect. I'm going to raise the border of it and we might need to work with the orientation in order for it to actually work with the same perspective. So I basically just reset the Z orientation and then you can start to play with it and just make sure that it is more or less covering the ground in the same perspective of the floor. And in this example, we see that this is exactly the case here. Now, of course, you can change the dimension here if there is a need. In this case, I don't want this solid to be outside of this gray area where the helicopter is standing. And you can also stretch it just to fit. So this is what I'm going to do. Something like this. And once again, the reason of doing those changes will be more obvious in a moment when we will move this scene into Cinema 4D. For now, you can get rid of the grid effect. And one more advice which can help you to speed up things is maybe to change the layer color. So I'm going to go to the solid settings while this layer is still selected and basically just use the eyedropper to give it a similar color to the ground. Now in this case, it doesn't look much because we have a light in the scene that is lighting this plane as well. Don't worry about this light for now. We need it, of course, for the other title, but it won't affect anything inside Cinema 4D. At least we can tell it what to affect and what not. Once again, I'm just going to move it a touch over here. And this is all we need to do in terms of prep work. And now we are ready to transfer this or actually export this scene to Cinema 4D. So I'm just going to go to the file menu here and from the export menu, I'm going to choose Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. This is built in into the newer version of After Effects. I'm going to call this AECT for camera track and just save it on the desktop. This is just a temporary thing. We are going to import this in into Cinema 4D and merge it with the scene that we're going to create. For now, I'm just going to hit save and let's move on. The next stage is to actually create a 3D live scene from After Effects. I'm going to turn off the eye here for my Track Solid 1. And then I'm going to go to the Layer menu. And from here, I'm going to choose New Maxon Cinema 4D file. It will ask me where I want to save it. Once again, I'm just going to save it on the desktop. Don't worry, you will get this file from me and I'm going to call it 3D title. This will launch Cinema 4D Lite and will create a new document that is being shared between After Effects and Cinema 4D. Now before I'm going to start designing here inside Cinema 4D, I just want to make sure that they are sharing the same properties, the same dimension. I can see just by glimpsing at this document that the duration is not right and probably the measurements are not right. So let's return back to After Effects for a moment. 
and I'm going to press command on the Mac control on the PC here on my time code watch to convert it to frames. It will be much more easier to work in the same units between those two software. Then I'm going to go to the composition settings and just make sure that the preset here will match what I have inside Cinema 4D. So I'm using here the HDTV 720-2997. The duration is 155. Let's set the same values, the same coordinates over in Cinema. So back inside Cinema, the document is still open. Nothing is being changed yet. I'm going to press on the render settings here. And from the output, let's choose film and video. And first, let's make sure that the dimensions are correct. I'm also going to change the frame range here to all frames if I'm here. We are going to revisit the render setting in a moment before rendering the final scene inside After Effects. For now, let's close it down and just make sure that we have enough frames, exactly the number that we need. So 155. Now let's hit Command S or Control S on the PC return to After Effects and this should update the file here. So I'm just going to drag this file until the end of my composition and we can see that indeed we have something over here. It's not ready yet, but we have something to work with. Now I'm going to return back to Cinema 4D Lite and let's import the tracking information and the scene that we've created inside After Effects. For that, let's go to the file menu and choose Merge Objects. I'm going to navigate to my desktop where I save this file, select the AECT, which is the After Effects camera tracker, and choose open. And this will actually place everything that was visible or everything that can be shared between After Effects and Cinema using the export plugin. I want to make the scene a little bit more easy to control, so I'm just going to move those items outside of this null object, select it and delete it from view. Now we have After Effects 3D camera on the scene. We can press on this icon and take a look at the scene just to make sure that indeed we have everything that we needed. And it looks that it is working. Now in this state, it's a little bit hard to work and see exactly what we have. So we need some kind of a reference. We can see that we have our shadow catcher number one and our track solid. And by the way, the shadow catcher is this plane. This was used for the first title. We don't actually need it here. So in this case, I'm just going to select and delete it. We also have this light, which we might want to modify in a later stage. But for now, let's just bring our background to cinema in order to check that everything is in order. For this, let's go over here and set a background layer. I'm going to double click over here at the material tab just in order to create a new material. And let's double click on this material and use the Artbeats footage as a texture. So I'm just going to say load image and then navigate to where I've saved my project. This is my shot over here. I'm just going to say open. Cinema 4D will ask you if you want to take this shot and move it to the project location. In this case, I'm going to say no. And let's leave this dialog. And then let's take this material and place it on the background. This will make more sense now. And we can see that indeed all the information that we set up in After Effects is ready for us to use here inside Cinema 4D. Okay, so let's create our 3D title here and adjust it to fit the scene. I'm going to temporarily switch off the visibility of my track solid one, the floor layer, by holding down Alt and double clicking on this traffic light here. Then I'm going to go to here and add a text element. The text should say the chopper. So I'm basically just going to write it down. And I know that the font that I need to use is the same font that I've chosen inside After Effects, which is impact. Now, in order to create a 3D object, hold down Alt and choose the Extrude NURBS. Now, we can't see the text because it is hiding somewhere else in the scene. So just drag the timeline cursor here until you spot it. And here it is. Now I'm just going to drag it more or less to the place that I think it should be. It might take a couple of moves to do it. And let's say that this is it. I'm going to drag it a little bit backward 
and I'm going to press R in order to get to my rotate tool and just basically turn it so it will be a little bit more readable of course so maybe somewhere over here I'm just going to hold down shift so it will be snapping to 45 degrees I also think that we need to scale it down so maybe let's I don't know give it something like this maybe even smaller and move it over here once again you can scrub just to check and see that indeed this is working for you I'm going to select the extrude nerves here change the cups to fillet cup on both the start and the end give it some more values here this is just so it will catch a little bit more of a reflection and stuff so I'm just going to basically play with it until it looks nice as always you can use command R in order to check the intermediate result and I think that we need to extrude it a little bit more so let's go to the object and in the movement here just raise it until you're satisfied once again command R in order to see the result and I think that I might want to take it a little bit out of you know 90 degrees orbit just so it looks maybe in the same orientation of this chopper now my idea is to create something which is semi-transparent in terms of material in order to do it quickly we can actually use the content browser that actually ships with cinema 4d light and have a lot of presets for you to use so let's double click on the presets here and open up the light folder and then let's go to the materials and maybe use one of the glass texture I'm going to drag the glass simple texture over here and let's double click on it just to edit it a little bit in the material editor I'm going to add a luminance channel and press on the color here and basically just going to add a very saturated uh, orange which should work nicely with the orange that we see over here in the chopper I'm just going to reduce the brightness a touch and by looking at the preview here I can see that this is working quite nicely I also may want to visit the reflection and just exaggerate it because you know I love reflection so what the heck maybe let's take it to 61% let's be brave here all right as soon as we are ready we can press command R to see it in action and it already looks kind of interesting we can see through the letters and of course we can work on them if necessary I'm just going to press command S or control S for a moment just to show you that when I'm returning to After Effects everything here is being updated according to whatever I did here so this is a live link let's modify a couple of things in the Cineware plugin I'm going to change the renderer from the software mode to the final mode just so we can see inside After Effects how this looks and of course you can move around After Effects timeline and check that everything is okay and you can also run preview it from here but before doing all those nice things let's just add the shadows on the floor this is the reason why we've prepared it at the first place so I'm going to hop back into cinema 4d and return to my object manager in order to create shadows we need a light of course we already have the floor here so I'm just going to once again alt click on this traffic light and let's add a light this will be a simple light of course we already have a light in the scene but I think that this will be a little bit more easier in terms of what we need the first thing we need to do is of course ask this light to cast shadows I'm going to choose shadow maps soft and obviously we can't see the light in the scene so let's try to scroll back here it is once again make sure to raise it up a little bit and move it to the place that you need of course you can always if you want to work a little bit more precisely use this for grid view and just point the light exactly to the place that you need but I'm just going to do it quite roughly over here and judge by the appearance so maybe somewhere over here and once again I'm going to press command R 
in order to render the result here. And this is the reason why we made this floor so big. So when we are inside Cinema 4D and we are casting lights, we can see how this will affect it. Okay, I'm just going to raise it a little bit more to the top. Once again, do a couple of RAM renders check. This also indicates that we have a little bit of a mismatch in terms of the angle between our 3D object and the floor. So using the floor like this is a really helpful guide. I'm going to select my extruded nerves and try to eyeball it or fix it until it will more or less be in the same location, at the same plane. I think that we might need to maybe move it a little bit down so it will actually touch the floor. And we might need to play with the bank angle, just touch. So this looks much more convincing. I'm going to reselect my light, maybe move out of this camera just by clicking on it. This will help me to make more adjustments just a little bit more easier so now i can basically place the light wherever i need it to be and do a couple of tests in order to see that indeed it behaves exactly as i wanted it to be once again this needs a little bit work until you get the desired result so i'm just going to play with it a little bit more maybe move the light over here switch back to my 3D camera, press Command R until I see something which look quite similar to the shadows that we have on the shot. And I think that we reach this point by now. Now at this point, I want to define the different passes in terms of the object buffer and the shadows on the floor. So in After Effects, I will be able to separate them and create my desired composition. Before doing so, I might want to push the floor a little bit backwards and maybe scale it so we don't get this line in the middle of the characters here. Now this is a design choice, of course. You can go your own way. But I'm just going to get out of this camera, select this and just basically move it all the way over here. And we might need to also scale it a little bit. Let's see if we manage to do it. It's almost there. Maybe just a touch more. And I think that let's try to render. I think that we almost have it. I think that we need to rescale it just a little bit. So maybe somewhere over here. Just a touch. Now that we are done, let's define everything that we need in order for the passes to work. So first we need to create an object buffer for the text. We want it to be a separate element. So make sure to select your extrude nerves, then go under tags and from the cinema 4D tags, choose a compositing tag. Go over to the object buffer and enable buffer number one. And now let's define the passes that we want to include. So I'm going to go to the render settings once again. Make sure that under multi-pass, I'm choosing the object buffer. And I also want to make sure that the shadow is available. And of course, go ahead and select both of them. Now the object buffer will be group number one. This is what we defined. For the shadow, there are no options whatsoever. If you want to improve the result, go ahead and choose the anti-aliasing here and change it from geometry to best. I'm going to leave it like this for now just in order for things to be a little bit quicker while I'm demonstrating. Then it is very important to remember to save the scene. This will update everything that After Effects will need to use. And now we can return to After Effects and set everything over here. And now this is where all the magic is happening. Make sure to select the CinemaWare plugin and in the multipass over here Tick the Cinema 4D multipass and also make sure to select the defined multipasses. These are the layers that we just defined inside Cinema 4D. Now just press on the add image layers and you will have everything that you needed in terms of compositing. Now there is a little bit of work for you to do and this is just to define the object buffer which serves us as a Luma mat. So make sure that it is above your 3D title. And from here, just choose Luma Matte in order to see the other channels. Now we can see only the shadow, 
So just make sure that the eye is turned on for the layer itself. And here it is. This is the final composition, almost the final, but it does look very convincing. You can, of course, check it in other places as well. And since every layer here is separate, you can continue in After Effects to do some post-production work. Note that the Cineware plugin automatically sets the shadows passes to the multiply blending mode, so you don't even have to think about this. But let's try to improve the title itself. Remember, this is After Effects, so we can actually access all the arsenal of effects that we have over here. For example, we can use under stylize the glow effect just to make those letters appear a little bit maybe interesting. I'm going to change the original colors to use the A and B colors and for the color B I'm just going to sample a bluish tint from the sky and then let's play with the glow threshold maybe lower it a little bit and raise the glow radius and also let's reduce the glow intensity maybe to 0 0.6 0 0.5 just to give it a hint of a sky color and i think this helps to add a glowing touch to this scene making it more connected with the colors we already have in our video footage remember you can render everything inside after effects if you want to get a better anti-aliasing make sure to revisit cinema 4d light Go under your render setting and change it to best and maybe play with the minimum and maximum level according to your needs. You can always create a render over here just to check how it looks and make sure to save the file in order for After Effects to read the updated version. Now let's move to full screen and create a final RAM preview to see the outcome. And it does look wonderful. But if you have one more minute to spare, I'm going to share with you two more tips. The first one is a technical, the second one is more of an artistic choice. You can see that indeed we have a nice movement with pretty much everything stacking into place or sticking into place. But we are missing the motion blur effect when everything is moving from side to side. Now, I deliberately remove the motion effect or actually didn't choose to use it when I retimed the shot. And this is because After Effects built-in camera tracker doesn't play nice with motion blur shots. So we might want to add it at this stage. This is quite an easy task now with the new version of the software because you have a faux motion blur effect. It's called pixel motion blur. And you can actually add it now to the whole composition. So let's do just that. Go under layer, create a new adjustment layer and search for the pixel motion blur by start to typing the word pixel, of course. I'm going to double click on this effect and let's just place our cursor maybe over here to see the result. Of course, you can play with the shutter angle, shutter samples and the vector detail if you want to get a little bit more precise or more pronounced motion blur. Now before rendering this once again, if you chose a high settings inside Cinema 4D Lite, it's always worth to check inside the preferences where it says memory and multiprocessing, how you set the multiprocessing options. By default, After Effects will turn it off for your RAM preview. This checkbox is usually turned on which means that we are not rendering multiple frames using the installed CPUs. In this scenario, I recommend to turn it off and then create a RAM preview. It will make the render much more quicker. And that is, of course, if you have enough RAM and enough CPUs. And now let's once again return to full screen and go back to the first frame and watch this render with the pixel motion blur effect turned on. And you'll have to agree that this is a much more pleasing result. Adding this motion blur really helps to sell the scene and it looks much more natural. And this is the end of the tutorial. I want to thank you for spending this amount of time with me. I hope that it was worthwhile and you learned a couple of new tricks and tips. 
And until next time that we'll meet, this is Aran Stern for Artbeats.com saying goodbye.